This is exactly how you take home over 20,000 per month in 2023. I wanted to switch it up for you guys a little bit and show more of an interview format. You can see how myself and my good friend Luke, how we did it, so hopefully you can do it too. Thanks so much. Just tell me a little bit about like your high school experience potentially, and then what made you want to pursue entrepreneurship, and then at which age did you say entrepreneurship's the thing? Honestly, from an early, early age, like, even from like middle school when I started to realize like, I started to question a lot of stuff about like what direction we're being led in through school. For me, it was realizing like, there's gotta be more. There's gotta be like something else bigger that we can push towards and like a more um, meaningful path we can follow. So was there a moment when you realized that you're being put in a system? It goes back to middle school. Like my brother and my older cousin, yeah. they're both like probably four years older than me. I started asking them, you know, like, well, let's say, you know, I did get straight A's in middle school. What, what would happen next? And they were like, well, you know, these grades don't mean anything. And so for me, like, that was the point where I knew, like, something was wrong. <laughs> yeah. I was like, <laughs> so you're telling me all this work, all this homework, all these tests, all these quizzes that I'm doing in middle school aren't going anywhere in a meaningful direction. To me, like, meaning is what we're here for. Purpose mm -hmm. is what we're here for. We're here to um, follow a direct path that leads to purpose and something with a bigger meeting and so for me doing a bunch of this work and like every day we're going to school like um, working doing tests quizzes homework and it wasn't leading us to like a bigger purpose it was like immediate red flag for me you felt like the work that you were doing was meaningless yeah right? so at which point were you felt like after my freshman year of high school my sophomore year was the same year yeah my junior year was the same year the year after that my senior year was like I didn't really feel like I was learning anything new after that. Like exactly. I felt like I broke past, this is what there is to know here. It almost just felt like a repeat year yep. again and again and again. You do it once and you're like, okay, <laughs> what's the next step? And then you're just kind of put back in the cycle. It's just the same thing. Yeah. I'm learning the same thing a little bit different way. Right? <laughs> and it doesn't feel like I'm learning any skill sets that will really benefit me. You're not expanding in the, the, um, the pace and like the, size that you would think you should mm -hmm. that makes sense yeah and so like after going through that process going to college did you feel like college was the right next step for you i pretty much was like okay i'm gonna go try school in colorado um give it some time see what i can create out of this and see what you know how it affects me and how it helps me grow and immediately you know it's the exact same as high school it's not much different and so immediately i'm like <laughs> I'm like, okay, uh, this obviously isn't for me exactly like I expected. So I was a semester in, I was like, okay, let me not waste any more of my dad's money. Cause obviously I was fortunate enough to where my dad would at least help me for the first year or two. So from there, I kind of took ownership of my own ability um, yeah. after that. Um, you gotta bet on yourself. Where, exactly, yeah. bet, at your, bet on yourself at some point in time. First step for me was like, how can I create business? How can I create revenue mm -hmm. to where my parents don't have to worry about me? How can I pay for myself to where I'm not a liability? And so one of the things was a, a moving company. Um, I had got an idea from one of my friends from high school who was doing great in a moving company in Louisiana. His, his name's Jake Walker. Mm -hmm. um, his company was a tiger in his truck and he did great. I kind of stepped into it. I'm like, hey, like, show me the ropes. Let me see what this is about. Like, I want to kind of create this into something more because I believed if I created something from scratch and then all of a sudden made it to where this is a very high value business, mm -hmm. other people would respect it and my doors would open naturally. That was a cool real realization that even something so simple can become such a vehicle. And so from there, I watched doors open. Like, yeah. as soon as I started the moving company, another opportunity came up, random opportunities. Like, hey, you should come do um, some roofing jobs, some mm -hmm. roofing sales for me. And he's like, um, you would kill it. Like, with your background, you played sports, you're obviously a hustler, um, you're willing to do what it takes. Like, come do some roofing jobs. Start doing that. And all of a sudden, I have like three sources of revenue off of nothing. Um, and so that was like powerful for me to watch like what I knew I could do come yeah. to fruition. And I think so. You learned, you learned an important lesson that took me a little bit to learn, which was simple scales, fancy fails, mm -hmm. right? Because I went in and I tried to start an app, right? That was like, and I had no skills, right? I went in, I was like, okay, pitch this app idea, you know, try to start an app. And I had no skills for that where mm -hmm. you went in and you started, okay, what's something that I can do? What's something that's simple that I can scale with? what I have in front of me and what I know. Just wanted to say, if you're enjoying the interview, I dropped the full hour plus version in my Discord. It's a private community full of other people looking to achieve the same things. It's absolutely free. It is application only. So if you wanna to apply to get a chance to see the whole interview, drop down below. You don't necessarily need a plan. 
And I think the, the biggest lesson I've learned over the last couple of years is if you cannot focus in on the business, the opportunity, you can focus in on the skill set, then you can start building those skill sets and then you just logically put one foot in front of the other. You just going out and doing stuff and trying things. Like when I was in high school, I did a car detailing business. So I went out and that opened the door where I met Alex because I went and knocked on his door trying to wash his car. Um, that's how I got into the solar industry. Um, mm -hmm. Doors just opened because of me putting myself out there. If we just continue on this path of taking massive action, we're gonna be like, uh, I gotta learn that skill set. I didn't even know how to learn that skill set. Exactly. Right? I thought I could drop ship myself out to <laughs> do the Bahamas and chill. And then I realized, oh, there's skill sets behind this. And then when I found sales, I was like, oh. I was thinking, you know, maybe like, I'm doing so many moving jobs, somebody's gonna notice that I'm doing a moving job for, they're gonna offer me an opportunity. That was like kind of my mindset, doors open like that way. Doors open completely different way. So I'm doing those three jobs. I have the moving company. I'm doing part-time at the U-Haul to get discounts on my trucks. Um, I'm doing roofing sales door to door a little bit. And as soon as I kind of got into roofing sales, a family friend had reached out. Mm -hmm. And they were like, it was like my dad's best friend's son. His name's Harlan Basier. And he was doing solar in Orlando, Florida. And he was like, dude, like you're absolutely grinding right now. Like you have such a platform to where you're making connections with so many homeowners, doing moving jobs. You're learning the skill of door to door and sales with roofing. Um, you're obviously a hustler like bro imagine if you put that into something like solar have you heard about it and I was like no like what the heck is solar <laughs> like I have no idea not a clue and so he's like every deal you close you get roughly like five grand for mm -hmm. and to me I was working like three jobs like hustling like really getting after it like early mornings late nights like barely making 5k a month and so he was like dude 5k a deal like <laughs> that's it and so I was like 5k a deal like I could easily go get five one deal a month yeah like, that's easy that replaces all three of my streams right now like okay then like i do one more deal a month mm -hmm. and all of a sudden i've just 2x my income like that is to me is the simplicity of what blew my mind and so from there i was like okay like tell me more like what what else like do i what do i have to do pretty much like i'm mm -hmm. willing to do whatever it takes like i don't really care like yep. I'm, I'm 20 years old like i had just turned 20 at the time and i'm like dude like what do i gotta do i don't yep. care like I yeah. truly don't like because we have so much time exactly and like people don't like that's the beauty in what me and you have done is like dude like we understand that like we were willing to fail time and time again to make what we wanted happen because we knew if we failed for five years straight we're still 25 and we just yeah. experienced five years of opportunity and trial and error and action and failure that we'd be savages in five years, but people don't realize that. And so for me, it was like, do I need to come out to Orlando? Do I, is there something I can do in Colorado? Like what do I have to do? So some people might say, oh, you had a family friend that guided you in this direction, mm -hmm. right? That family friend would not have reached out to you <clears throat> unless you took action, mm -hmm. right? So it's like when you start, start kind of going down that path or journey from my experience, when you actually just say, hey, I'm going to do this, there'll be the people that doubt you and they'll the people that, are watching you that you don't know are watching you. Yes. Right. And that person will see you if you continue to do it for a long enough period of time. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like you started doing this stuff. People start talking. Let's just say 70% of them hate. And then, or let's just say 99 people hate. And then that one person will see you and say, this is a young, hungry kid. I want to help this person out. So you thought of this as I'm going to go fail until I'm successful right and you thought about it through a long-term time horizon and i was having you know a conversation with alex and he paraphrasing it he was pretty much you know like hey do you want to become a millionaire in 90 days like one in a thousandth chance or do you want to become a millionaire in 10 years guaranteed i was like guaranteed like let's make this thing happen he's like cool you need to do the boring work you need to work on the skill sets you need to you know start taking actions on you know the things that you can invest in yourself and then the one thing no one can take away from you people can get lucky and get into an opportunity where they have you know a vehicle that can take them make them super rich that doesn't happen a lot of times mm -hmm. but if you focus in on building in, in my opinion if you focus in on building those skill sets for yourself then you're no one can take away those skill sets from you exactly right? so it's like being able to think through okay, the next 10 years, what skill sets do I need to be the person that I want to become? And then from there, okay, if I take action, I will open my own doors from the action that I take. And then people will probably see me that are older and more successful because I'm continuing and I'm not quitting on this thing. So I think those are, you know, two crucial points. 
Um, exactly. And, yeah. and I totally agree. And something I want to touch on from that is like the skill set is like what I took away from the whole opportunity is like, okay, even in two, two years from now, let's say I don't make a dime. I have the skill set of knowing how this industry works and also probably the skill set of being able to communicate and talk to people to where no matter what I do, if my bank account goes dry, I now mm -hmm. have that ability. And yeah. so for me, that was like, it was as simple as that. And we spent two, three years gaining a skill set that's going to serve us for the rest of our life. Worst case scenario from here, because people say dropping out of school, like you won't have a safety net, whatever it might be. We have a safety net. We build a skill set that's going to make us over $200,000 a year for the rest of our life. So no I matter think, where we're at, <laughs> wherever we are in the world, everything needs to be like, there needs to be transactions that take place. Right? Exactly. I think there's like two crucial moments or two crucial things that you have to do. Mm -hmm. Right. The first is saying that you want to make a change and putting your back against the wall. The second is when you put your back against the wall is changing the environment that you're in. Mm -hmm. Right. Because the second I dropped out of school, I said, I need to move out of my parents' house. Like I need to get out of here. And I think a lot of people have that view of stay at home, save money, et cetera, et cetera. But if you put yourself in a position where you have to win or you have to go back to your parents and say, I failed, I was wrong. Then you're just, you're putting so much more pressure and pressure shapes diamonds, right? Exactly. So it's like- In life, people tend to overcomplicate everything's so complicated so in depth and it's like if you can continue to get good at simplifying things that's like almost the key to life mm -hmm. the other key that i kind of noticed and i like kind of thought about and like bring me to a realization when i was driving across the country was like people are afraid of being uncomfortable yeah the key to life is to be comfortable with being uncomfortable and so to me that was what i dove head first into i'm like i don't know a single person in Colorado or in orlando um, the guy that I'm going to live with, I haven't seen in over five years. Um, I don't really know much about him or what's going on. I heard an opportunity. I'm like, let me like go make what's uncomfortable, comfortable to me. Or I didn't really know what to expect or like what the industry was like. I had no preface of like what was going on really in the industry. I had an mm -hmm. idea. And how, how important do you feel the mindset of going in and in knowing you don't deserve anything? And knowing you don't know anything like mm -hmm. how important is that like going through that first especially the first couple of steps first couple of stages it's huge bro because like a lot of times people with experience come into this and it hurts them more because they have experience because they think they know something mm. at a bigger scale and so when they come into this they're like thinking okay i'm going to succeed right away um i i know what i'm doing i'm going to learn this faster than others but then they realize it's the same game everybody else is playing mm. whether you have no experience or not like you're playing the same game honestly i was worse than i expected <laughs> when i started like i couldn't even get my name out like like it was like your first door you're just i remember my first door so vividly because i wasn't really expecting it to be like strictly door to door i was expecting mm -hmm. more of like zoom calls phone calls i couldn't like get past my first couple sentences like stumbling on my words mumbling like stuttering like yeah went through all of it like i never like after i started closing one of my coworkers told me he was like jacob when i when i first heard you role play i never thought you'd make it and it's because like when you start something you'll suck i had so much confidence that i could do it but at the same time Every single day I woke up, I was scared that I wasn't going to make it. We had an interview with my, my team like a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago, and I told people, it's like, if you want to come try this, please don't. <laughs> You're not supposed to come try this. You're supposed yeah. to come do it. The people that I know that actually dedicated everything to it and put their back against the wall, it just, it, it happens as long as you do the work. During that process, it's funny because I was just like really hustling and pushing through all adversity, not expecting anything, but like giving everything almost. And of course, doors start to open. Mm -hmm. None that I could have imagined. And so I went to high school with obviously you. A buddy of mine, Dallin Slade, his dad was starting a solar company in Austin. They had heard that I was doing solar in Orlando. So he almost like kind of cold called me. And was like, hey, like we'll put you on salary and give you leads to come help us open up this company. Mm -hmm. And so that's like a perfect example of like, I could have never set that up myself. Like that was something that came through it to fruition from what I had put out there. Mm -hmm. um, it's the energy that I had put out there had came back to me. So from there, that business didn't, didn't succeed. Again, an example of like, I was prepared for failure. Okay. That business did not succeed. And um, have you closed a deal yet? Yeah. So okay. within that six to 12 months, I started closing deals, not at a high rate, not at a high level. How many months in until you close the first deal? I'd say about three. Three took months like, in. Yeah. It took me like three months. Yeah. And so that's why when I see people in the street going through the same thing, like I laugh when they get stressed out. I'm like, dude, like. And real quick, how much have you made in a month? Like. 
highest commission month? Um, over forty thousand. Over forty thousand. Yeah. So you went from ninety days not closing anything. Yep. To making over forty thousand in a month because you stuck to it. Exactly. Yeah. I had the I had the commitment to the process and not the results. Um, because I, I knew it would come eventually. Like whatever happened. Like if you think that I knew that a solar opportunity was gonna appear in Florida when mm -hmm. I was in Colorado, you would have been out of your mind. I had no idea. <laughs> like I still I used to laugh about it back then. It's like. Yeah what the hell am I doing in Orlando? <laughs> like, like, it's just kind of random. And so from there, like, you, if you thought I was going to be able to get an opportunity in Austin, my hometown, and live with my family for no rent, mm -hmm. like, that was never a thought process either. It just kind of opened up for me. From there, that business failed, and, like, I kind of took ownership and, like, okay, let me see what I can make work by myself. Mm -hmm. From there, that's kind of where things get interesting and things start to cook. We kind of looked around, tried to make as many connections as we could, see what the best opportunity for us was. There was maybe me and two or three other guys, which everything comes around full circle. We had always kind of wanted to take ownership in ourselves and the opportunity. And out of nowhere, we find like the best possible partnership we could have ever wanted. Nick Briggis and Dennis, and they owned um, Contractors Creative. And yeah. so they had like a seven figure marketing agency. This part's so great. This <laughs> part's so great. It's crazy. And so we made that connection. Um, they had been running this online agency, this marketing agency where they produce leads for companies all over the country. It doesn't matter the company. Six months before then, before we started with Simple Solar, we almost bought their campaign for them to produce leads for us. At the time, it didn't make sense. So we just continued with Simple Solar, ripped doors. All of a sudden, opportunity rises again. Nick and Dennis had realized their leads were phenomenal in the solar industry. And so like, man, like this is crazy. Like I wonder if we can really like dial in. Them being young entrepreneurs, they have the same mindset. How can we um, take ownership in our ability? It was crazy divine timing. Like it kind of clicked. I'm like, this mm -hmm. is exactly what we're missing. I want to be that people person. I want to connect to people. I want to be a, a leader in this game and like truly give people a path and an opportunity. But I don't have the software and the marketing and like the systems built behind me. I need somebody to partner with and lift that weight off my shoulders and Nick and Dennis were the guys. And that's when Texas Standard Solar was born. It's like you went through so many failures and then you got momentum, you lost momentum, you got momentum, you lost momentum, you kept betting on yourself. And then, and I think a lot of the, a lot of the people, you know, listening to this are very like-minded in terms of how we think. And it's the reason I like sales as a, as a starting path, because there's so many different skill sets you can learn. Sales is something that you can pick up and then you can also make a lot of money in the process mm -hmm. to be able to say, I'm going to take a season of two, three, five years where I'm going to learn the skill set. I'm going to stack up, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars and then I'm going to take everything I learned. And, and I'm saying this because people are probably like, why don't I just start my own thing right now? Mm -hmm. Do it. Like, go, go for it. Plenty of people are successful doing that. Right. But if like going back to what I said earlier, if you want to guarantee success, over a long enough time horizon. So if you want to go, I want to be a millionaire in 90 days versus I want to be a millionaire, you know, in 10 years guaranteed, one in a thousand chance, you know, guaranteed shot, then it's like, okay, how do you create the most leverage for yourself quickly? And that's being able to learn from someone else, earn at the same time, and then stack a bunch of cash. So you have that ability to go on the offense after you found kind of your path. So that's, I mean, obviously that's what's been working for us. So it is, you know, you know, something that's cool. So Luke, if, if you could go back in time and you could talk to yourself two, three years ago when you first dropped out of college, when you first started this, what advice would you give yourself? I think the, the biggest key in the simplest terms is fall in love with the process and detaching from the results is the simplest version, but as well, um, continuing to ignore the outside noise um, in this day and age, like social media, your mm -hmm. friends, your uh, people you went to high school with, even your family, it's like everybody's got something to say because they've never taken the path you've taken. Uh, that was one of the biggest realizations for me not going to school is like, I'm learning from people that aren't doing what I wanna do. So why would I pay money to do that? Why don't I get paid to learn from people doing what I wanna do, which is become massively successful and be a multimillionaire. And so um, when you when you start something like this, when there's no guarantee, mm -hmm. we live in a society where everybody wants that instant gratification and that, um, that safety net. And so when you step into something that's not safe, there's no guarantee, um, there's also no limit, people question. I had everyone tell me that I was wrong and a handful of people say, this is the path, you're doing the right thing, keep on doing it. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why there's the top 1%. It's because they do what the other 99% don't. And it's tough, man, when, like when it's your parents or someone close to you, it's tough. It is. But you have to really objectively look at the situation mm -hmm. and say, are they doing what I want to do?